Hey calculus class, today we are going to learn topic 20, logarithmic differentiation. First, we need to review some of our laws of the logarithms. So if x and y are positive numbers and n is a rational number, then if we were to have the natural log of x times y, that is the same thing as the natural log of x plus the natural log of y. If we were going to have the natural log of x over y, <clears throat> same thing as the natural log of x minus the natural log of y. And if we were to have the natural log of x to the nth power, that is the same thing as n times the natural log of x. I hope you remember these from 3, 4 and math analysis. So what we currently know, we currently know that if we are given f of x is equal to b to the x, then the derivative is the natural log of the base b times b to the x. We also know that when you have a log, y equals log base b times of, of x, then you can rewrite it as b to the y equals x, where b has to be greater than 1 and cannot equal 1, and x has to be positive, a positive value, not equal to 0. So with the above information, we can find the derivative if we know that f of x is equal to the log base b of x. Oh, and we will also need to use implicit differentiation. So we are going to start with b to the y equals x, and we're going to find dy dx. So we're going to take the derivative of b to the y with respect to x, and we're going to take the derivative of x with respect to x. When we do that, we're going to get the natural log of b times b to the y times dy dx equal to 1. Now we're going to solve for dy dx. So divide by the natural log of b times b to the y. This, you should notice, is actually x. From up here, we said that x equals b to the y. So I can replace b to the y with x to get that the derivative is 1 over the natural log of b times x. So what you need to remember is that the derivative of log base b of x is equal to 1 over the natural log of the base times x. The natural logarithm. So if I wanted to take the derivative of the natural log of x, that means I'm going to take 1 over the natural log of the base, which is e, times x. Well, you should remember that the natural log of e is 1. So therefore, the derivative of the natural log of x is equal to 1 over x. So let's do an example where you have to take the derivative of the natural log of x. So let's take the derivative of cosine of the natural log of x. So I'm going to have to use the chain rule. My inner function is the natural log of x. My outer function is cosine u. Take the derivative of the inner function. So the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. So now I'm going to go ahead and multiply them together and replace u with the natural log of x. Logarithmic differentiation. <clears throat> so this is used with complicated functions involving products, quotients, and powers. So for example, if we are given y equals x to 1 over x, you're going to want to take the natural log of both sides and use the logs of logarithms to simplify. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides to give me natural log of y equal to the natural log of x to the 1 over x. And you should notice that you're going to have to use the power logarithmic property where I can bring down the power in front of the natural log. To get natural log of y, 
equals 1 over x times the natural log of x. And for the purpose of the next step, I'm going to go ahead and take 1 over x to become natural log of y equals x to the negative 1 times the natural log of x. And the reason why I did this is because your step 2 is to now use implicit differentiation to find dy dx. So we're going to take what we currently have and we're going to find the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So using the fact that we now know that the natural log derivative is 1 over whatever we have inside of here. So that means the nat derivative natural log of y with respect to x will be 1 over y times dy dx. Here I'm going to have to use the product rule and that's why I brought up x to the to the negative 1 so I didn't have to use the quotient rule. So using the product rule, my first term derivative of the first function x to the negative 1 is negative x to the negative 2 times the second function which is a natural log of x plus the first function times the derivative of the natural log of x. Now I'm going to do some simplifying. So over here I bring down the x to the negative 2 to the bottom. I bring down the x to the negative 1 so it multiplies with this x to give me another x squared. Since I have a common denominator, I can create one fraction on the right side. So I now have uh, 1 over y dy dx is equal to the negative natural log of x plus 1 all over x squared. So now I'm going to solve for dy dx. When I do that, I get the following. However, I will have to replace y, and that is your step 3. You need to rewrite dy dx so that the entire function is in terms of x. And we had earlier what y was equal to. It should have been the original function. We had that y equaled x to the 1 over x. And I am done. Your turn. So go ahead and pause the video and find the derivatives of the following using logarithmic differentiation if needed. All right, let's see how we did. On the first one, you should have noticed that you, yes, you do need logarithmic differentiation because you have something crazy in the exponent. So you want to take the natural log of both sides so that this exponent can come down. So take the natural log of both sides, bring the sine x down in front. Now I'm going to take the derivative and I get 1 over y dy dx, use the product rule on the right side, so I get cosine x, natural log of x, plus sine x over x. Solve for dy dx and replace y with what it's equal to, which is x to the sine x. On number 2, you do not need logarithmic differentiation. One, you already have a natural log here. And two, you have an inner function and an outer function to take use the, in order to use the chain rule. So your inner function should have been the fifth root of x, which is the same thing as x to the one fifth. My inner function, or I'm sorry, my outer function is the natural log of u. So when I take the derivative of u, I'm gonna get one fifth times x to the negative four fifths. And I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this so I no longer have negative exponents. So I now have 1 over 5 times the fifth root of x to the fourth. Take the derivative of the natural log to get 1 over u. I can go ahead and multiply these together. And at the same time, replace u with the fifth root of x to get the following. Since these have the same root, I can go ahead and multiply x to the fourth times x. And the fifth root of x to the fifth is just x, so my answer is 1 over 5x. All right, let's see how we did on this one. <clears throat> do you think you're going to have to use logarithmic differentiation? Nope, you do not. You are going to have to use the chain rule a couple of times, actually. All right, so my inner function 
is x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. My outer function is the natural log of u. Now when I take the derivative of the inner function, I'm going to have to use the chain rule again to get the derivative of this piece right here. So derivative of x is 1. The derivative of x squared minus 1 is 2x. And the derivative of the square root function is 1 over 2 square root of the whatever. And the, the 2 is canceled. The derivative of the natural log of u is 1 over u. Now I can go ahead, multiply them together, and replace u with this stuff right here. So I get the following. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do some simplifying. I'm going to go ahead and find a common denominator for this term, so it becomes 1 fraction, to get the square root of x squared minus 1 plus x should notice that these cancel, so goodbye. And I am left with 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1. All right, number four. Let's see. Ooh, now this is definitely a complicated one. And you will have to use logarithmic differentiation. <clears throat> so I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. And the property that I'm going to have to use is a few of them. The first one, you should notice, is that I have three functions multiplying each other. So I'm going to use the log property that splits up the argument if it's multiplying by splitting up, taking the natural log and adding them three different times. So when I do that, I get the following. And I can use some more properties, such as the power property. So when I do this, I had this was x to the 1 half, so I brought the 1 half down. This right here, the natural log of e is just 1, and it brings down the x squared. And the 10th power comes down in front as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So the derivative of natural log of y, 1 over y dy dx. Derivative of 1 half natural log of x. This is just a multiple constant, so it just comes along for the ride. So I get 1 over 2x. Derivative of x squared is 2x. And when we take the derivative of this term, we will have to use the chain rule. The inner function is x squared plus 1, so the derivative is 2x. Multiple constant comes along for the ride. And the derivative of the natural log is 1 over the inner function. So now I'm going to do some simplifying to get the following. And I multiply both sides by y, and I replace y with what it is equal to, which is all of this stuff right here. And I'm going to say I'm done. If you really wanted to do more simplifying, you could find a common denominator, but you do not have to. All right, the natural log and absolute value. So remember that when you have y equal to the absolute value of x, we rewrite it as a piecewise function. So we have a positive x when x is greater than or equal to 0. We have a negative x when x is less than 0. So then, <clears throat> if I wanted to have the function of the natural log of the absolute value of x, the reason why I did this was because we know that x cannot be negative. So if I rewrote this as a piecewise, I would have that the natural log of x would occur when x is greater than 0, so that's the positive and I would get the negative when x is less than 0. Now if I wanted to find the derivative, I would find the derivative of both pieces. So the derivative of the positive side, so the derivative of the natural log of x, that's just 1 over x when x is greater than 0. And the derivative of the natural log of negative x, this is going to have to use the chain rule. 
So my inner function's negative x, so the derivative of negative x is negative one, and the derivative of the natural log of the inner function is just one over that inner function. Now notice the negatives cancel, so I'm left with the following. And you should see that they are basically identical. So what this means is that the absolute value has no real effect on the derivative. So when you see it, you can just ignore it. Don't freak out. It's going to be used primarily when we get into integration. So I hope you enjoyed logarithms and logarithmic differentiation, and I will see you in class tomorrow. Have a good night.